So, but it's covered in the topic that I'm asked to talk on. Let's just, just wait my slides. You know, you can see that I do have a disclosure on here, which is I am the founder of Eurocells Research and Eurostem, and we'll get into why, but the key is, is that just like Dr. Bonner says, just like Paul Perito just alluded to, this stuff needs to be studied further, this stuff needs to be accepted by our organization, and we need people out there helping promote it, educating it, researching it. And I looked around and I said, no one else is gonna do it, well, it's gonna be me, and that's why I started these companies in the last year or so. So my talk is stem cell injections, you know, stem cell and biological injections for erectile dysfunction, a critical review. And I say a critical review because just like Dr. Bonner came up here and says that he's done some PRP injections, there are a lot of people doing a lot of things, and we need to know what's fact and fiction out here so far to date. Can you play the... We're gonna play a little video here for one second. Mr. SG, you've been approximately 18 months for stem cell treatment, correct? Yeah, that, that is correct, yes sir. Yes, Prior to stem cell treatment, you were using Trimix to get erections, correct? Yes. And now, you know, you can get erections on your own with Cialis 5 milligrams, correct? Yes, it's been uh, the best response that I've had in, in many years since having the stem cell uh, clinical research. Perfect, and you're happy? Extremely happy. My family's happy, and uh, I, I, I'm in Venice Spirits because I, I feel I've regained a, a part of me that was missing. Thank you. So, so guys, the point of that is that, oh, go back to my other slide now, is that I know it works conceptually, it should work, and the question is why and how do we get there and how do we prove it out to everybody? So just a little bit of my history. In 2011, I started treating patients with urologic conditions with biologic injectables. I presented research at the AU, you know, I did a couple of feasibility studies in 2013, 14, presented research at the AUA on ED in 2014, presented at the Southeast section in 2015. And I just now, you know, I've now talked to my friends, guys that actually understand this stuff and understand why it's important to keep progressing and we've now reached eight clinical sites that are going to start being up and running at this point to uh, start studying this stuff. So in terms of biologics, the two things out there right now are PRP and stem cells. We just had a great talk on PRP, thank you. It's essentially concentrated blood plasma, and we've all heard about what stem cells are and what they do. Pretty much universally, whether they're fat stem cells, bone marrow stem cells, embryonic stem cells, amniotic stem cells, the thought is that they improve vascular genesis and improve wound healing. They create new blood vessels and they heal old blood vessels. You know, this is just a slide of all the different growth factors found in PRP. And, you know, I'm gonna go back to that for one second. And, but, and then there's also stem cells, and I just touched upon it, but there are different places where you can get stem cells from, which makes it so confusing and nobody knows which is the right and which is the wrong. And so let's just go over that real quick. There's the placenta, there's the baby side of the placenta, there's the mother side of the placenta. You can get stem cells from either one. There's adipose-derived stem cells, there's bone marrow stem cells, there's embryonic, which nobody uses. And then even in 2014, they said they can find stem cells in the skin. You can take a skin cell and turn it into a stem cell. So it's all commonly thought that stem cells can differentiate themselves into almost anything. Chondrocytes, adipocytes, osteocytes. And basically it's because of these, what's called MSCs, mesenchymal stem cells, that can turn into blood vessel cells, neural cells, smooth muscle cells. And there's a ton of research on this. Pretty much this is what universally has been studied by bi every biomedical engineer getting a PhD for the last 10 years. And here's just a picture of how the placenta can form all these cells. So let's talk about erectile dysfunction real quick. This is stuff that pretty much everybody here that is a urologist and probably everybody knows. There's a lot of erectile dysfunction out there. There is 
Primarily, it's caused from vascular diseases such as diabetes, atherosclerosis, hypertension. It, this is just the diagram of it saying, look, you get your blood flowing into the penis, your penis engorges, as it engorges, your veins compress, preventing, keeping the blood inside, as we know with corporal fibrosis, with high blood pressure, with high cholesterol, diabetes, the, the tissue itself becomes fibrotic, and the blood vessels become fibrotic, so the tissue doesn't expand as well, and the blood can't get in there as well. In Peyronie's disease, which we're going to talk about in a second also, 1% to 7% of men, sort of the hallmarks of Peyronie's disease is the scar tissue that forms in the penis, causes you plaque, pain, curve, and erectile dysfunction, mainly distal to the plaque, because there's no blood flow that can flow past the plaque, is the way I explain it to my patients. So, now we understand what we're dealing with. We're dealing with biologics, and we're dealing with erections and Peyronie's disease. So my question is, and I know that these guys are here, but what does the vampire facelift and the priapus shot have in common? Well, they were formed by the same guy who's not a urologist. To me, as a urologist, in the urologic community, it does not make sense to me that you go onto a website of people injecting penises with medication for erections, and 99% of the docs on there are not urologists. And I think, for us to sit here and say, hey, look, we can, but uh, we don't know if this stuff is fact or fiction and not study it, just seems wrong to me. So I also encourage you guys to get, get out there and help me research this stuff. Now, that being said, there is no clinical data that I've found on PRP for erections. I went to clinicaltrials.gov. I don't see any studies right now actively recruiting. There is no true evidence that it works in erections that I've found. And I'd be happy to, you know, I think that's what Dr. Banner said as well. However, I just showed you a list of all those growth factors. And I really do believe it works. Conceptually, it does work, right? It should work. There are all those growth factors. There are all these stories. Is it going to work in everybody? And the answer is probably not. And you know why? Because there's a different etiology of erectile dysfunction in everybody. And you are using autologous treatments, right? So. Not everybody's blood is going to have the same concentrations of growth factors as everybody else. I'm willing to bet you a 70 year old who's diabetic has less growth factors and cytokines in his PRP than a 30 year old that's not. More stuff that we need to study. So we just talked about that. So let's now talk about stem cells in humans. There's a review article I put out by UCSF in 2014 that said there were 35 studies out there one was only one was a human injection injection study but every single one of those 35 studies showed that stem cells improved in some degree or fashion erectile dysfunction when you go on to clinicaltrials.gov we'll go over the research papers currently going on we talk about safety we just you know let's talk about safety for a second jason my medical student just presented on like 27 injections at the time of us compiling that data and that it's conceptually safe I get all of my amniotic products from a tissue bank that's fully accredited, that was inspected by the FDA last year, that it has, in over 40,000 injections at this point, I believe, has never had the transmission of any bloodborne pathogen like HIV or hepatitis C or hepatitis B. And again, conceptually, this stuff conceptually should work, just like it should work in wounds, and it's being used in wounds right now, it should work in hearts, and it's being used in hearts right now and being studied in all of these fields. So, then you talk about human studies. There was one human study on erections out of Korea. I, I actually have you know, presented the second human study here at the AUA in Orlando last year. It's been accepted for publication, just hasn't been published yet. For Peyronie's disease, last week I was the first publication of our research, which is, as far as I can tell, the first human study of its kind using, using injectables of stem cells for Peyronie's disease, it was in the Journal of the American Osteopathic Association. And what we found, in, you know, in the erectile dysfunction study is that there was a statistically significant increase in blood flow into the penis. And in the Peyronie's study, there was a statistically significant increase in blood flow. We decreased the plaque size and number tremendously, and we improved the curvature of the penises that were curved. So in terms of what's on the clinical trials website right now, 
In Korea, they're doing another study. There was that one study and they're doing another study right now. There's a study in Florida, you know, there was my study from Florida. Oh, you know, I skipped the slide. Sorry, so the studies for erectile dysfunction, Korea in 2010, it showed a trial. Uh, seven patients, umbilical cord blood, which was enhanced with mesenchymal stem cells. This uh, study showed improvement in erections and actually improvement in hemoglobin A1C as well, because they were all diabetic patients. In my study, in my studies, we just talked about the results one second ago. So what else is on the clinical trials website? Currently, fat stem cells are being studied in Egypt, in Moscow, in Denmark, in California, and in Florida, but the person studying them in Florida is not a urologist. And there's bone marrow studies taking place in France that was, that was recruiting years ago, never published its results on post prostatectomy patients. I'm happy to talk about it, but I personally don't encourage people post prostatectomy to get injections. I'm just not sure that if you haven't had a great nerve sparing prostate, if you're really going to improve the penis enough to get satisfactory erections with stem cells. And then there's another study in Korea going on. So why stem cells? Well, again, just like the PRP, there are lots of growth factors in there, which we can go over. There are cells. The product that I use has over 90% went thaw cell survival rate or viability rate. Uh, but, you know, and again, I'm typically using these, these amniotic stem cells. We talked about autologous. Again, the problem, just like PRP, is that not everybody's stem cells are going to be the same. From the bone marrow, from the fat, you take a 65-year-old with diabetic fat, harvest their stem cells, they're not necessarily going to be the same as a 30-year-old stem cells. Uh, and then again, not all etiologies of erectile dysfunction are the same. And that's why some of the, these studies, it's hard to do these studies. Oh, so I, I have one more slide. I think for the sake of time, we can keep going with the slide presentation. Okay. So this was, they were not upside down or sessions. Approximately a year ago, you were not getting erections on your own, correct? And now, you're able to get erections on your own, one year post stem cell injection. That's correct. Perfect, thank you. So again, and I have, I have dozens of testimonials on my phone, right? So I have, I'm happy to share with you guys all of the testimonials I have. I'm in the process of studying this stuff. And the key is, you know, it works. And so the concept of us sitting here as an organization and not and saying, oh, well, it needs to be studied more and letting other doctors out there do it that are not neurologists just sort of seems wrong to me. Especially, and it seems wrong, one, because we're, we're not helping the patients that need help, and two, because we really should be leading this charge, just like Dr. Pareto says. And so in conclusion, I really believe that biologics of the future in medicine, in urology, and especially in erectile dysfunction and Peyronie's disease, it does need more research. We need to know what cells are best. We need to know what growth factors are best. We need to figure out if PRP is good enough. And we need to figure out if it's autologous or placental-based cell therapies are gonna be the future. Thank you guys. Is, is anybody in the crowd using stem cells right now? Stem cells? <laughs> Nobody else? Well, I, I, I hope you're familiar with it because it, it, it is, it, it's definitely on the horizon. But the, the one question and, and that has been approached by, by you, Tom Liu, it's interesting because he just came out with something new last week, but the last paper that he, Tom Liu, wrote about you know, this topic was in 2009. So he kind of lost interest in Wayne and now it's coming back. But the, the biggest question is, it, it seems like this should be a local phenomenon. So in other words, when you inject, inject the stem cells into the penis, you have to localize that material for some period of time. Do you localize the material and you have a certain period of time that you trap it in the penis, or are you up the thinking of Tom Blue where he believes there's a lot of central effects that contribute more to the uh, increased uh, 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 score, the uh, sexual uh, symptom score? So the answer is that I do track in the penis, and Tom Lou did speak at the AUA, at the AUA lab this year and said, we couldn't figure out how to track in the penis, the cells migrate, what I do, and you know, we talked about the entire penis, and a lot of these guys out there are using a tourniquet on the penis, but really, we're talking about the corporate cavernosum, and we need to track in the entire corporate cavernosum, including 
below, above, everywhere, because you want the, the entire corporate, both corporate and heel, right? So what I do is I give them an artificial erection beforehand, trapping the blood, just like, as we know, erections work. Yes, I put a little tourniquet on as well, but because they have that artificial erection for 20 minutes post stem cell injection, I would like to believe, and obviously I would need um, to video trace my cells, but I think that the cells are able to stay there longer, the growth factors are able to stay in the penis longer, and they're able to integrate themselves. Anything else? I think that's a good suggestion, Mike. What I do is 10 minutes into the uh, numbing procedure, I, I use a pretty small uh, constriction band, and after the PRP is injected, I keep an additional 15 minutes, And uh, but uh, I may use the, uh, the artificial erection to Thank you. I'm here to help. Excellent. Thank you very much. Mike. Thanks, guys. Uh